for the last few years also a small handful of journalists who have been sort of CIA watchdogs, most prominent of which has been Lewis Wolf. We have an interview with him. Maybe you can, to introduce this interview, tell us a little bit about Lewis Wolf and his journalistic publications. Who is Lewis and what has he been doing over the years and why is the government so outraged by him? Well, his background is, is uh, it's thoroughly uh, legitimate standard, if you will, uh, journalism. He, he was assigned for a couple of years in Manchester, writing for a couple of prominent uh, news organizations. Manchester, and, England? England? Yes, uh, Manchester, England. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually uh, made his way uh, through London back to the United States, where he uh, gravitated to uh, a scrutiny of the CIA and the intelligence community, watching the revelations of the church committee, information that he had come across in his research, some of which he had published as part of news stories previously, other parts of which he was not permitted to publish by the nature of the press establishment. And so he uh, put together with Bill Schapp and Ellen Ray the Covert Action Information Bulletin whose function was to focus on the intelligence organizations of the United States and discuss and expose in a, in a perfectly legitimate way the covert action activities of the CIA principally as well as the other uh, intelligence organizations. Uh, I believe they formed that in about 1976 and have been in Washington since publishing stories of true stories, their quality, their standards of journalism are exceedingly high. Uh, that bulletin is distributed in the State Department and it's sold out the first morning that it's put on the stands in the State Department newsstands. Uh, they also publish in that bulletin the names of CIA agents and where they are now as they're assigned and reassigned about the world. Uh, I believe that in very recent months they have ceased the policy of publishing yes. uh, names because the controversy is so hot and they would just assume and, and also it's never been their intention to break the law. They've made that clear from the outset. Bill Schapp is the brother, he is a, a highly competent attorney and is the brother of a top sportscaster in New York City. He is a very articulate man himself and has testified to the Senate many times against the names of Agents Bill, for example, and, and uh, defending what he and Lou Wolf are doing. And uh, after his testimony, many times senators have come up and shaken his hand and said, I disagree with you, but you certainly make your case for the legitimacy of what you're doing very well. Let's, let's, yeah, let's take a look at uh, some of the things which Lewis Wolf had to say and we'll let you comment ever so often on, on this, okay? What in the years that you've been publishing it do you think are some of your most significant revelations? Are there some stories that even shocked you? Well, I think one of the big stories that we were able to document in some detail was the, the, the whole scope of CIA activity similar to what the CIA did in Chile and which was documented by the Senate Select Committee was the uh, whole covert action program in Jamaica in uh, between 1976 and 1980. And we, were, we did a great deal of research into that and we discovered uh, many, in many ways, a very similar program, almost a classic model that was followed along the lines of, of what they did in Chile, uh, including three major categories, uh, military, paramilitary activity, uh, the use of propaganda in the, in the media, uh, and the third one, which was economic warfare, using uh, the multilateral organizations, the International Monetary Fund and others, to withhold loans which had been promised to the Jamaican government. Uh, this is one example. Okay, what are a couple uh, more of the details of that? You particularly, you mentioned those first two examples of actual paramilitary activity well, the CIA was involved in in Jamaica. There was a fire, for example, that took place uh, in Jamaica of an old people's home. Uh, uh, I think 150 old and infirmed women, many of them blind, were living in this home. And uh, as it turned out, the, the place burned down in the space of about eight minutes, seven or eight minutes. Um, it was discovered that the phone wires had been cut and that uh, the exits had all been blocked, even those who could see their way out could not get out. Um, and 
uh, that the means by which the fire was set was the use of a petroleum jelly, which was unavailable in Jamaica. This was one indication, among others, that there was outside help. Uh, uh, why the would, the, this, why would yeah. the, the CIA, you might ask, why mm -hmm. would the CIA mm -hmm. want to uh, right. murder 150 old women? It was because it was an effort, part of a very large-scale effort, to discredit the government in Jamaica, which was at the time uh, uh, headed by Michael Manley, the Prime Minister. Uh, there were images produced of Michael Manley in the uh, media, in the Daily Gleaner, which was the newspaper which the United States, uh, through the CIA, helped to support. Uh, and there is a good deal of evidence of that. There were images of Michael Manley showing a death mask. I mean, it was his face which had been somehow made to look like a death mask, although it was pretending to be a, a photograph of him. Um, and there were many ways to try and discredit him. This is very, very similar, in fact, to what the CIA did to try and discredit uh, Salvador Allende in Chile. If you remember, uh, Richard Nixon instructed the CIA in a meeting, uh, which was in 1970, in the White House. And there was a, a document in the Senate com report, which is reprinted. And he said, make the economy scream. Those were his words. And that's, of course, what the CIA proceeded to do in Chile, and that's what uh, they also did in Jamaica. They also had furnished uh, a lot of munitions and assistance to the terrorist squads that were going around killing people in the, in the cities and also in the countryside in Jamaica as well. That's correct. Well, John, you had a trip down to Jamaica, and you saw a lot of these things about Jamaica with your own eyes, right? Yes, indeed. I, uh, a very moving, a very interesting trip to me to see uh, a target country at a time in the height of a CIA operation when I was completely outside. So there's no way that I could see. To see the problem that journalists have always had when the US government was targeting on a country in a situation, trying to destabilize it, overthrow, or manipulate the elections or whatever, of trying to figure out what's going on when you don't have access to all of the flow of cables and the discussions and National Security Council meetings and whatnot for the planning. I observed that from published information, the CIA station there was quite large for that size of a country. It was huge, in fact. It was bigger than any station I knew of in Africa, although Jamaica was a fairly small island with two million people. That's typical of when the CIA has, has got a big operation going in a place, they beef up the station and beef up the offices back stateside. The tone and flow of uh, articles in the Gleaner was, of course, as Lou says, um, definitely a chapter out of Chile or a chapter out of the Angolan operation. Uh, every indication of a massive CIA operation going to destabilize the government, to make the economy scream. And uh, in that case, I would say that uh, probably someone got promoted for that one, probably several people. Because Manley was run out of because office. Because it worked. By he a legitimate... Was, yeah, without, without a scandal, without uh, an assassination, without uh, uh, the things that have caused the CIA so much grief, uh, uh, Manley, a champion of, of social democracy, of, of giving the people a piece of the pie, uh, was thrown out of office, and an arch-capitalist uh, was put in office. And, uh, and again, there was uh, minimal adverse publicity. Uh, Lou Wolf and the others were studying the situation and did publish about what was going on, but it was not published in the New York Times and the Washington Post and the big, uh, the, the big television networks didn't do studies on it, primarily because even if the journalists uh, of the big organs knew what was happening and might have wanted to uh, they really just, because of the secrecy, couldn't get the truth about what the United States was doing.